Behind me is the 2018 Genesis Sport. Now I've done a massively comprehensive review on the Genesis G80. So you, you're gonna wanna check that. I'm not gonna rehash a lot of it because so much is the same here. But let's take a look at the nuts and bolts of this vehicle. The exterior of the Genesis G80 Sport. With this bl black paint color, it looks more murdered out. You have dark gunmetal-like wheels with copper center cap accents. You have copper center or copper accents in the full LED headlamps, and you have a new grille design on the front. It's this massive shape that we see on every car, but it is a little bit more aggressive, and that's what they're trying to do with the Sport. They're trying to make it look the part, okay? The problem I still have with this car, as I did with the original Genesis that I drove, is the people that look at it are interested in it. That's positive. But <laughs> there's three people that I talked to that saw this and thought it was a Chrysler 300. I said this in the original video, it's a negative thing. You do not want to associate this with an FCA product. I'm sorry. Uh, that's not, no offense to Chrysler owners, but you don't want that here. Uh, as we move along to the side, let's take a look. Now this is where things start to improve greatly because the side profile, yes, you can see other vehicles in here, but it's a really positive thing. This looks extremely sleek and a lot of it is because of the length. This is a longer vehicle, there's no doubt about it. But instead of trying to shrink all the proportions down and get all the character lines in and all the sculpture that a lot of vehicles try to do, the designers try to shrink it down and get everything in there and it just is a mess. This isn't a mess because it flows extremely well from front to back. And that's a positive part about the design here. Now, when you come to the back, this is really a sleek looking rear end. Tail light design is clean because you have this deep, deep red design and you go straight to clear, like crystal clear bottom. Love it. Uh, the inside, well, it's got an electronically actuated trunk, which, you know, honestly, it's just fast enough not to be annoying. Uh, and it's somewhat practical. I don't know, I'd prefer it just to be, you know, manually operated, but whatever. Uh, the trunk space is pretty good. I can fit my slider. I, I mean, really, I can fit all of my camera gear in here. It doesn't seem to be the tallest opening, um, but, you know, with the hinges hidden, I mean, really, you're not gonna have an issue, especially in this class of vehicle. You're gonna pretty much fit everything in here that you'd like. When we get inside, inside on the Genesis G80 Sport, well, a lot of this is a carryover from the original review. There's not a lot changed here, but the things that are different are pretty simple. This is all black, on at least on this car. You ditch the matte wood trim on the dash and on the doors for this carbon fiber trim. And it's gonna depend on who you are. Uh, I'm not a fan of matte wood or woods in general in cars, I don't get it. But I also don't get putting carbon fiber in a car that's not designed to save weight. Yeah, it kind of looks cool, but this car is not about saving weight. And if it's there to kind of tell you it's a performance car, well, we're gonna have to find out during the drive if, if that kind of matches up. There is also this red, orangish, you know, copperish stitching uh, on the center console and the doors and the steering wheel. And what this reminds me of is kind of the orange stitching in the sport models from Hyundai, from the Sonata uh, and the Elantra Sport. I, I would, I just don't like the connection there. To me, it looks very similar. The rest of the car has some of the best ergonomics, some of the best buttons, the HVAC layout, all of that stuff is really, really good in here. And the ergonomics, the padding for the most part, yes, some of the elbow padding on the armrests are a little, they could use more padding, but for the most part, the materials feel really good in here for the price. And that's what you have to kind of think about here. The price point of this car, uh, you know, if it was twenty, thirty thousand dollars more, you'd probably have more alloys, better, you know, plastics or leathers. But it does everything so well that it's hard to complain about. Now, for 2018, you get pretty much all the safety stuff standard. Uh, you have lane departure warning, all the assist with the lane departure assist. You have frontal crash mitigation, radar cruise control, all of that stuff. If you're worried about that, that is here. Uh, overall, the attention to detail is pretty good on this car for the most part. Uh, interior storage is kind of average. The door pocket storage could be better. Uh, the cup holder storage is pretty decent. You have wireless charging pad in here if you have a Samsung phone. 
um, you know, your interior storage is just pretty good overall. And one of the nice things about this is with the Lexicon Audio, it still retains a CD player. Now, I know that's probably not a big deal for most people anymore, but when you get into these premium sound systems, like I just got out of the Bowers and Wilkins and the Volvo, amazing system, but now that they ditch CD, it's hard to get uncompressed audio in a car to appreciate this. If all you're doing is listening to MP3 and like XM and all that crap, you can't appreciate this. So I put in a CD and the sound system is really good. It's one of the highlights of this car with how quiet, comfortable and refined it is. You can really enjoy that experience. Now comfort is supremely important in a car like this. There's no doubt. Uh, the front seats are great. The driver's seat has more adjustability than the passenger seat, but it is, both seats are gonna be great. No matter how long you're in this car, I doubt you're gonna have any fatigue. The back seat area is another highlight. It has the most headroom in its class. If you're probably up to 6'2", 6'3", even with this front seat all the way back, you're still gonna fit. Uh, there's a ton of room back here. You have heated seats, uh, you have vents in the back, but you can't control the HVAC. But I think comfort is primary and it's not gonna disappoint. You know, ever since I got the G80, uh, the ladies found out and I wore through a couple pairs of jeans from Jean Jammin', but now is a good time to head into the shop to talk to Terbowski about the G80. We can take a look at and see if anything's changed since we saw it last. Scott, it's a two for one today for you. Yeah, it's, I can't, can't believe it. Yeah, we've seen this before, haven't we? Multiple times. Yeah, so this is now no longer a Genesis, it's a G80. Okay, rebranded, and it has a new motor, a 3.3 liter twin turbo, which we have not seen except in the G90. But in the G80, we saw the 3.8 liter, naturally aspirated, and we saw the V8, the five liter. So this is the third iteration of it. Now underneath, it's all the same. The whole underbody is carpeted, which we've taken the panels off so we could expose what all of the subframe looks like, the serviceability points, the components, the power steering module, all the little nooks and crannies that absolutely less than 1% of people care about. What do you think? It looks like every other car. No, it doesn't. Sure it does. This looks like premium vehicles. You have aluminum components. This looks like premium vehicles. This looks like yes, C-class, D-class car. Yes, it doesn't have an aluminum carrier. It has a, a steel carrier. That's true. I will give you that. Your hub, your knuckle, your lower control arm, uh, your upper control arm, except for the upper A-arm, is all aluminum. The upper A-arm is steel. And it is it's two piece. It's a two piece. It has dual, not dual ball joints at the top. Mm -hmm. It's got dual ball joints at, at the, the bottom, bottom too. Uh, when well, you actually triple if you count the tie rod. True. And even more if you count the sway bar links. Those <laughs> you, are ball joints too. You can't count the sway bar <laughs> links. Uh, it, this does have adaptive suspension, which the G80 that we looked at before does not, and that's part that's standard on the sport. And the adaptive suspension on this car is really really good this car rides amazing anyways we made it to the back scott we're in the rear end your favorite spot i make a living back here it's where i get all my business done mm. but let's talk brass tacks this has an aluminum hub aluminum control lower control arms everything else is stamped steel including the carrier you have a Drive shaft that is connected to a differential that does not have a limited slip, unfortunately. You have springs that are separated from the dampers. They are not a coilover design. However, you have camber and toe adjustment in the rear, but you do not have that in the front. You only have toe in the front. That's a shame. It is a shame. And in the back, this has a very special feature, which is going to make driving this extremely exciting. You have mismatched rear tires. I don't know why. Doesn't much oh, matter. Oh, it probably right had a blowout, and that's the only thing they had in stock to fit this stupid thing. Yeah, they pro they're probably right about that. Get oh, it back the stupid the size. Let me rephrase that. They are 275 in the rear, Scott, with a 400 treadmill. 275, 30 or 35 or something it's even stupid. stupider. It, well, it's not stupid. It's performance. No, it's not. Okay. It's not performance, really. These tires are barely average 
at keeping the power down and in the wet i was just like man come on uh i think this car would be amazing if you did swap on some real tires i think it would benefit from it but if you're gonna and buy put some oleans on it and <sighs> no i didn't say that Put this, some real brakes on it, some stainless steel brake lines. No, it doesn't need any of that. This car is set up really well. Some tires would do it good, but they are staggered, which you know what that means. It's tough. It's performance. No, it's not. That means the future owner is going to come to you and complain. Why, is the t why are the tires so expensive? Because you can't rotate them, so you're going to wear out the rears, and you can't rotate front to back here. So what are you doing back here? I'm your Korean consultant, Mr. Goose. Nothing but the best for Mrs. Goose's little boy. <laughs> <laughs> get a life. I'm going to get you the first plane back to Korea. You can tell them to give me a squared set of tires and wheels on this thing next time. They Please. pay me in kimchi. So what kind know. of pipes? What size pipes? 40-inch pipes, bro, in diameter. Those aren't 40 inches. Stop using millimeters. We're in America. <laughs> I am back in the Genesis G80, but this time it's the Sport. It's been updated, and we're gonna start right off with some acceleration. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the new 3.3 liter twin turbo is a major upgrade in my opinion and feel to the 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6. We're gonna take this through some turns and let's see how this works out. The ride quality in here is just ridiculous how how good the body control is it is so comfortable unfortunately this car's tires are not up to the task of driving aggressively the second thing about it is there's a bulge in one of the sidewalls and one of the tires and then one of the rear tires is mismatched from the rest so i don't want to totally harp on the handling because of that but one of the things about this car is the chassis is so capable there's so much potential in this car that is restricted one by the the setup of the suspension it's totally it's totally biased towards comfort the second problem with it is when you have traction and stability control off and you have it in sport mode it doesn't really matter what modes you have in it will not let the car off the leash it doesn't matter what you do, the stability control system cuts right back in. Uh, it feels like the engine's turning off once you start to have a little bit more fun. And that's a big problem for a car like this, at least in my opinion, when you throw a sport badge on it, you want the vehicle to be able to drive. You want it to do what you want it to do, not what it wants you to do. And that's kind of a theme here with this car for me in terms of driving it aggressively the whole time. Now the next part of this is the transmission. Everything is so well sorted in this car. It is, everything operates at such a high level. If you have any intention to drive this car in a sporty, sporty manner, you are a more lead-footed driver, you want more control of the transmission, this is not your car. This is the biggest downfall of this machine is the eight-speed automatic it is so smooth again it is biased towards smoothness smooth upshifting smooth downshifting but it is extremely slow to respond they put these plastic-ish metal shift paddles on here there's not really a true manual mode it just kind of goes into manual mode when you pull a gear and it is so slow to respond i don't care what mode you're in it's slow to downshift it doesn't rev match downshifts well um 
And I think that for me, I can forgive some of the softness in the suspension, but I can't forgive the transmission. And this is where they need to do their work. They need to figure out how to get this trans up to speed of the competitors. And you will have a really super like enjoyable car that's balanced in terms of comfort and performance. So now that we understand that, you put it in drive, you put this drive mode into normal, uh, and you just leave the traction and stability control on, which you know kind of eliminates the whole sportiness of it. But this is one of the absolute quietest cars you're gonna get in. It is remarkably quiet, it is remarkably refined, and I know I'm gonna say this, and this is one of the biggest things about this car. You have to strip all your brand biases away. No matter what your experience is, it's really hard to talk about this in an unbiased way, okay? I can attempt to do it because I appreciate what they're doing here, but I'm not gonna be able to do that for consumers. I'm not gonna be able to tell you, hey, you have BMW money, go buy a Genesis over a BMW. It's just not gonna happen. But what I can tell you is, if you're shopping for one of those cars, do yourself a favor and drive this back to back with a five series, a three series, or you know, your Audis, your Mercedes, because this suspension, this chassis is the real deal. And it's not just faking it. When we, when we looked at the underbody, and we've said this before, this is a, tr this is a, a major breakthrough for Hyundai and Genesis. Uh, it is one of the best dampened cars in terms of ride quality. It's the most responsive. You get a ton of communication in here. And it's so reminiscent for me of driving the M3 that I had, the E92. Um, now, this is tuned more towards comfort again. It's not super responsive. It understeers first, and then it kind of gets into this weird oversteer. And it's probably because of the staggered tires. It's also probably because the tires are not, th this, tar this car is too undertired for what, what it can do. Um, but overall, it feels so good. And again, I said this at right at the start, there is so much potential in this car. I can't wait to see what they do f do with it. But as a daily driver, this is one of the most comfortable, comfortable driving cars I've been in and one of the most enjoyable daily drivers I've been in as well. Final thoughts. I can't believe it's been almost three years since I did the original Hyundai Genesis review before they rebranded this. And back then, I was completely blown away with what they were able to do as a brand. The transformation here was incredible. And, you know, most people associated Hyundai with cars or piles like the Hyundai Scoop or the first generation Tiburon. This is a totally different company. Now, here we are present day, drove this new sport thought about it and it still has the level of refinement solidity quietness and overall ride control and ride quality of cars that cost 10 20 30 thousand dollars more and i'm asking myself why would you pay more money for those other cars when you can have this well the simple answer is when i was driving this i can't separate i can personally separate the brand loyalties and brand biases but the average consumer cannot and Genesis as a brand is too new. It's still tied too much to Hyundai, like the front end styling. Everybody thinks it's a Chrysler. Everybody that sees it thinks it's a 300C or a huge amount of people that see it. That's a problem. The interior is still too tied to the Hyundai styling. It needs to separate that. But most importantly, and I think the biggest issue here is people still have not recognized Hyundai or Genesis as a brand like people have done with brands like Samsung or LG. 10 years ago, nobody would have a Samsung phone or an LG TV or a Samsung TV. And it took a while for that to catch on. Now, millions of people associate those products as some of the best on the market. And that is gonna take time for Hyundai or Genesis as a brand to catch up with. So if they can push the envelope to make their interiors more unique, the exterior styling a little bit more unique, and in just incrementally increase the quality and the prestige value of the car. And of course, resale value needs to go up too. I think more people will start to switch over to this, but right now it's just such in its infancy, you don't know where it's gonna go. But I recommend this car to a lot of people, especially on the used market because the prices are so good on them, it's just a no brainer. So 
That's all I'm going to say about this, and I'll see you next time.